So welcome to the Friends of the Rouge's annual membership meeting. My name is Marie McCormick. I'm the executive director of Friends of the Rouge. This is my uh, fifth year on the job and I am joining you this afternoon from my home office in the old village part of um, Plymouth, Michigan. So I have the honor of kicking off this unique digital experience as a now third virtual annual meeting for our organization. We really miss seeing all of you in person, but it has become apparent that hosting this event virtually brings greater accessibility to more of our community. We will be hosting an afterglow at Downey Brewing Company in Dearborn starting at 6 o'clock p.m. this evening. And Shimmy Shack Food Truck, which is a vegan um, food truck, will be there as a food option. But um, because Downey is a uh, tap room, you are welcome to bring your own food. Um, or order from another location. We invite you to bring your friends, your family, and it's even dog friendly. So if you are afraid of leaving um, your little friend at home, don't be, um, they're invited too. So before I begin, just a few housekeeping items. Tonight's webinar is designated as a town hall style, meaning that we welcome you to ask questions or make suggestions or comments throughout the event. Please paste them in the Q&A box you can find at the bottom of your screen. Um, Matthew and Sam will be fielding questions, and Renato and Lara will be monitoring the chat box. Karen will be assisting as well, and Jackie will be connecting and monitoring our Facebook Live tonight, while um, Kara will be live chatting on our Twitter and Instagram feeds. We plan to address any questions or comments at the end of the presentation following our awards presentation. The presentation should take about one to one and a quarter hours, and we will field as many questions until our hard stop at 4.30. As um, a change from previous years, please note that staff will also be describing images on each slide for those visually impaired. There are three image on, images on my screen right now, one of fall, winter, and summer scenes in the Rouge watershed along with the FOTR logo. In addition, we have an enabled a live audio transcription as a participant, you have the option to keep it on or turn it off. This afternoon's presentation is being recorded and will be available to watch on our YouTube channel within 24 hours, so stay tuned. I hope our comments this afternoon offer an open forum to communicate the action that Friends of the Rouge has taken this past year to advance our mission. Your thoughts and comments matter. Please share. Next slide, please. The image, on, the image on this slide depicts a close-up of what many know today as Southeast Michigan, overlaid with a variety of colors that represent the traditional ancestral home of indigenous people. We will take a moment of silence to demonstrate respect, raise awareness, and affirm the ongoing relationships between indigenous people and the land. We acknowledge the ancestral, traditional, and contemporary lands on which our watershed exists. Next slide, please. Friends of the Rouge's mission is to restore, protect, and enhance the Rouge River watershed through stewardship, education, and collaboration. Our watershed encompasses a large part of the Detroit metropolitan area and Southeast Michigan. And um, the image on the left, you can see where the red is urban on the map and is home to a quarter of the people in Michigan about 1.35 million people, 48 communities, and three counties. The images on this slide on the left depict a satellite view of the state of Michigan highlighting areas of high urban density with the outline of the rouge similar to the shape of a fan. Top right image depicts a large group of volunteers gathered together after a cleanup event. And at the bottom left image depicts the tip of a kayak in the industrialized section of the rouge with some kayakers and a factory looking building in the background. Next slide, please. All of our success wouldn't be possible without your support. Normally at this time, I would ask our current members to stand up and be recognized. While that's not possible with this virtual experience, I want you to know how thankful we are for your continued support. 
As the backbone to this organization, you provide the fuel that drives our mission. As a result, the Friends of La Rouge continue to successfully sustain and expand programs and priorities to preserve, protect, and enhance the Rouge River watershed. The image on the left depicts about 10 smiling volunteers standing behind a curtain of past Rouge Rescue t-shirts. There's also an image of two people in kayaks along the forested part of the river, and an image on the bottom right of a group of Friends of the Rouge partner, partners placing their hands on a rain barrel and smiling. Next slide, please. We also want to take a moment to acknowledge the organizations that are supporting a better river at a watershed sponsor level, and that defines at $50,000 or more for business or agencies and foundations, or $20,000 or more for an under $5 million in revenue nonprofit. If you have any questions about business or nonprofit support opportunities, please contact Lara Edwards. The logos representing our watershed sponsors on this slide include the Alliance of Rouge Communities, Bosch Community Fund, Community Foundation for Southeast Michigan, the Michigan Department of Environment, Great Lakes and Energy, the Fred A. and Barbara M. Herb Family Foundation, Great Lakes Water Authority, National Fish and Wildlife Federation, National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, the Ralph C. Wilson Jr. Foundation. In this slide, there are 15 faces with images of our wonderful 2021 board members. Um, one of the board members not pictured is Jessica Anders, um, a newer board member to the organization. These dedicated individuals have generously given up their time, talent, and treasure, the three T's of a successful board member. Each one of them have grown exponentially over the past year, stepping up as dedicated committee members, fundraisers, and committed, committing to the exciting prospects for organizational sustainability. Um, and so at this time, I'm gonna um, read out all the board members. And first, I'm gonna introduce our president, Laura Wagner. She is with Ford Motor Company. And Laura, if you're on and you'd like to introduce yourself and say a few words, um, Sally or someone else can enable your microphone for you. Ah, I wonder how that was going to work. Um, hello, everybody. As Marie stated, I'm Laura Wagner, president of the board here at Friends of the Rouge. It's been a great year at Friends of the Rouge, looking both inward and outward. We've been able to expand our programs, increase our mission-driven advocacy, and become more present in our communities through city partnerships working towards an expanded water trail, which will bring more and more people to and on our river. We've been able to hire additional staff to support the expanded programs and improved employee benefits and career development opportunities, making Friends of the Rouge an even more welcoming environment. I don't wanna um, give away any of the secrets for the rest of the presentation, so I'll just leave it at that. Uh, thank you, Marie, and uh, you can introduce the rest of our great board. Thank you so much, Laura. I'm so grateful for all your leadership within the organization. Um, so next, um, introduce our Vice President, Alice Bailey with Environmental Consulting and Technology. Our Secretary, Melissa Weidendorf with The Henry Ford. Our Treasurer, Samuel Wilkin, ITC Holdings, and our member at large, Mike McNulty, ITC Holdings. Um, the additional 2021 directors include uh, Dr. Paul Drouse with University of Michigan Dearborn, Bill Hazel with Marine Pollution Control, Irma Leapart with Sierra Club, Alicia Bradford, Wayne County Parks, Dave Norwood, formerly with the City of Dearborn and now with um, Canton Township, Brandy Salatchek with City of Southfield, Al Van Kirkhoff, formerly DWSD, now retired, and Susan Thompson with Wayne County Department of Public Services. Our new directors as of 2021 are Jessica Island Anders with the Skillman Foundation and Dr. Myra Tedeth with Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan. In addition, a couple of the smiling faces you see um, on this um, slide, we have had some retired uh, directors who have had to step away for um, a variety of personal reasons, including John Deslip with OHM Advisors, 
Sarah Rubino with Oakland County Water Resource Commissioner's Office, Jim Nash, and Dr. Oren Galdaluz, Professor Emeritus at University of Michigan, Dearborn. So members, I'm speaking to you directly right now. Your participation in the annual elections is critical to forming an incredible board. We will be voting for board members again in November of 2022. The elections usually at last for one month. Be ready to vote. You can vote by proxy. That will be available again this year. And we will be sending out a link on or before November 14th. Please let us know if you'd like to be considered for a board position or know someone who wants to join. You can email me at mccormick at therouge.org for details. You can always check our website for my email. Um, we also have opportunity to join board committees as well. There is no election required. You just reach out and I can connect you with the chair of your preferred committee. There are committee descriptions on our board, uh, for our board on our website. Um, so we have 10 official committees of the board, nine of which are open to the general membership. That includes the board development committee, our fund development committee, our finance committee, membership committee, and advocacy committee. And in addition, we have not board required, but supported um, committees of the board, including the Lower Rouge River Water Trail Leadership Committee, the Restoration Committee, Monitoring Committee, and the Rouge Education Project Committee. Um, in addition, we have the Executive Committee, which is restricted to officers. Um, and then in addition, there's also the Advisory Committee, which is an honorary committee you are often asked to, off or asked to join, um, de depending on how you'd like to um, commit your time, talent, and treasure to the organization. Next slide, please. So I continue to be humbled by the passion and fortitude of the people I have the privilege to work with each day. The Friends of the Rouge team not only hold expertise, but heart for the work within the watershed. Each day they share their talents with the community, giving endlessly of their time beyond the confines of their job duties. So in this slide, there are 11 faces with images of our staff. While we have 15 staff and one intern, it can be challenging to get everyone in the same place sometimes for photos like this. But I will read folks' name in alphabetical order. <clears throat> And I will also mention um, a couple of staff who are new as of 2021 and 2022. Um, first off is Kara Bell. She is our operations and membership assistant. She is new as of October of 2021. We're so, so, so grateful to have her on, on our team. Um, and you'll get to meet her tonight at Downey. Matthew Bertrand is our senior restoration coordinator and landscape designer. And staff members, if you are on, please feel free to um, turn on your camera and give a little wave. Hi, Matthew. Erin um, Cassidy is our education manager. She is not here this evening. Um, she is away enjoying, enjoying some parental leave with her new daughter. Um, so just wanna acknowledge that Erin is our education manager. Sam Davis is our new, our very newest employee, Sam Davis. Sam, hi Sam. She's our education and monitoring assistant. Um, and she just joined, gosh, not even a month ago. Um, we're so grateful to have Sam on board as well. She's gonna be helping Sally and Erin out with education and monitoring work. Um, and actually our newest, newest, even newer than Sam is Brian Devlin. Um, he was just hired on and has not even started yet, but he will be our um, in-house landscape architect and our restoration mentor. Um, his role is to assist our design team in um, overseeing some of the site designs that they have, as well as enabling um, our in-house folks to um, apply for and um, be eligible to take the landscape architect um, uh, test that you have to take. So we're really grateful to have Brian joining us very soon. Um, up next is Lara Edwards, our development director, who is so lovely and welcoming everyone this evening. Hi, Lara. Um, Dallas Ford is our restoration assistant. He is not pictured here, and I don't think he's here with us this evening. And then Karen Hanna, our operations director. You'll hear from her this evening. Um, hi, Karen. 
And now, next is Jacqueline Pecula, our restoration coordinator. Hi, Jackie. And then Herman Jenkins, he's our trail manager. You'll also get to hear from Herman this evening. Hi, Herman. Up next is Eli Lowry, our restoration assistant. He also is not pictured. I'm not sure if Eli is with us this evening. Um, up next is Renato Merriman. He's a, also a restoration assistant who's, um, I believe, out in the field planting tree saplings right now. So he is, he may join us, but he's not here right now. And then Sally Petrella, our monitoring manager. Sally is um, also helping advance slides and record tonight. So thanks, Sally. And you'll hear from her later. And then Cindy Ross, our restoration manager. Um, we can all be jealous of her getting warm and a nice tan in this Florida sun. <laughs> Hi, Cindy, welcome. And then we have uh, uh, one intern right now. We're actually advertising for a second intern, but our current intern is named Amber Puckett. She's our monitoring intern and started in January of 2022. We're very grateful to have her on our team. So that's our staff. Um, we're growing and growing and it's wonderful. Um, normally at annual meetings, you all get the opportunity to see each of these incredible people in person. While that's not possible in this virtual space, you can chat with us today in person at Downey Brewing Company in Dearborn at six. So I encourage you to come out for that. Uh, next slide, please. So kicking off our Keystone meeting to discuss all the successes of 2021, this slide features three images. On the left, there's two people using magnets to pull garbage out of the rouge. In the center, four volunteers are kneeling, one standing planting native plants at the Plymouth Arts and Rec Complex last summer. And on the right, a man with a lime green rouge rescue shirt and baseball cap selling native plants at a rain barrel sale last summer. <clears throat> so you will find my leadership notes in the Anna report, but a few takeaways from those notes. And upon reflection of 2021, I continue to come back to this word grit. Um, Harvard Business Review discussed this grit as sort of this bifurcated concept of passion and perseverance. As stated, passion comes from intrinsic interest in your craft and from a sense of purpose, the conviction that your work is meaningful and helps others. And perseverance takes the form of resilience in the face of adversity, as well as unwavering devotion to continuous improvement. This grit has been essential as Friends of the Rouge has navigated 2021 and our ever-changing state of the pandemic. Through what felt like arctic dark days in the early year, rapidly changing restrictions, a regional push to reopen the office, and then lifting fear in the warmer months only for us to hole up again as the fall rounded the corner and temperatures dipped. Hybrid work arrangements, fluctuating comfort with masking, developing and implementing vaccination or testing protocol, and venturing back into the world of in-person events have become baseline operations here at Friends of the Rouge. <clears throat> we have considered and continue to consider the valuable societal comfort, sorry, va variable societal comfort, aiming to meet people in spaces of comfort with every interaction. Uh, some of you may have noticed that we just sent out another COVID protocol update just a week ago. And I will, I will mention that at the end of this um, presentation. So this is a challenging process we undoubtedly share with the rest of society and one that takes true grit to endure day to day. So despite fluctuating pandemic protocol and varying levels of comfort, we had over 6,000 volunteers from across 48 communities dig in their heels and spades as they participated in our events and activities, achieving great things for the watershed like building rain gardens, discovering river dwelling insects and opening log jams for habitat and recreation, just to name a few. This successful participation is reflective of what we have noticed following the advent of the pandemic in 2020, a renewed desire by our public to participate in programming. This is another example of this is when our traditional Rouge Cruise rolled back into circulation, it sold out in less than two weeks after our announcement. The pandemic also did not deter our staff from extending reach throughout the watershed and at our park home. The team hosted or participated in 184 advocacy and outreach events at various locations 
both physically and virtually across the region. <clears throat> and you'll get to hear more about this tonight in our, and in our annual report, and if you come and chat with our staff this evening. So as you can see, the pandemic did not hold us back. We continued to push the boundaries of expectation for our ever-growing nonprofit. At the end of 2021, we successfully grew our staff to 14 incredible, passionate individuals who bring heart, courage, and expertise to the job each day. Our board continues to adjust and diversify with initial success in becoming more representative of communities we serve. These grounded programmatic results all tie back to our mission to restore, protect, and enhance our Rouge River and connect to our commitment to systemically weave equity and inclusion practices into every fiber of our organization. That commitment has translated into demonstrated successes in broader reach, deeper engagement, and a fundamental respect for the importance of all communities and individuals who call the Rouge home as we recognize that we can never accomplish our mission without the voices and intentional inclusion of those we seek to serve. Our Keystone programs continue to develop with the needs of our community and the changing watershed landscape. You will see that progress in the reports this afternoon. As you listen to this virtual program, we hope it inspires continued participation with Friends of the Rouge. We thrive because of the generosity of so many who provide both volunteer and financial support. We know the value of that generosity and thank all of you who have made this work to protect and preserve the Rouge River possible. For those of you who have tirelessly dedicated time and energy to the success of this organization, thank you. For those of you who are new, welcome. We look forward to working with all of you in 2022. Next slide, please. I am excited to announce that our 2021 annual report is ready for your eyes. The front page depicts a family of four smiling, sitting in a canoe on a dry, on land at a dry dock pop-up event from last summer. We will have a link to the virtual version of our annual report on our website within the next week. And that will be shared out via our e-newsletter um, coming out. And if you wish to have a hard copy, we will have a stack of them outside the Friends of the Rouge headquarters in Plymouth on, our, on the second floor for you to grab, or you can snag a copy at Downey Brewing Company during our afterglow gathering this evening. And I'm, I'm glad that um, my part is done for now. I'm sure you're all sick of hearing me talk. So up next, I'd like to introduce Karen Hanna, our operations director, who will discuss our 2021 financial performance. Karen. Thanks, Marie. Um, my uh, presentation starts off with a wonderful picture of a young man standing in front of some uh, canoes next to the river, holding up an oar over his head in, in like a victory cry. Um, the philosopher Heraclitus said that one cannot step twice in the same river. As with life, a river is unpredictable and varying yielding to the ebbs and flows, bends and curves that incur it, it encounters along the way. The river represents the passage of time and the ever-changing future. Two things that I've learned from my 20 years with Friends of the Rouge, to be flexible and to be prepared for anything. Embracing change was more important in 2021 than ever before. Slowly emerging from the economic downturn caused by the pandemic that shall not be named, we face new variants in both the virus and organizational challenges. Fortunately, we also found opportunities. Critical unrestricted support was secured in 2021, enabling us to invest in our infrastructure by maintaining and hiring additional qualified talent and advancing our technological capabilities in order to provide the quality programmatic work that help us, helps us to successfully fulfill our mission. Our objectives are always to ensure the prudent use of assets, money, and people establish and maintain judicious fiscal policies to produce accurate and transparent reporting and to receive an unqualified opinion of our annual audits. Most importantly, we realize that every action we take and decision we make ultimately has an impact on you, our members, donors, grantors, and partners. I'm happy to present the following 2021 financial reports for Friends of the Rouge. Next slide, please. So the next slide just portrays um, some bar graphs. It says 2021 revenues by source with comparative 2020 totals. 
and points out the total revenue that Friends of the Rouge earned this year of $1,343,888. So here we have our revenues by source. So where did our money come from in 2021? The government and foundation grants from 2020 became revenues released from restrictions and used for programming in 2021. Two grants from the state of Michigan Department of Environment, Great Lakes and Energy constituted the $122,826 in the government grant revenue that you see. Foundation support included the Herb Family Foundation support for our ongoing diversity, equity, inclusion, and justice training in a social enterprise grant. The Cleveland Cliffs Foundation provided funding for tree plantings in South Dearborn and generous grants from the Community Foundation of Southeast Michigan and the Ralph C. Wilson Foundation rounded out our $197,836 in foundation support in 2021. Other grant support, as you can see there, rose 75% over 2020. These grants included those from the Alliance of Rouge Communities, Detroit Future City, the Ecology Center, ECT, the Funders, Michigan State University, National Fish and Wildlife Federation, Pure Oak and Water, and the University of Maryland. These grants combined made up 45% of our total 2021 revenue. As you can see, corporate support here increased over 2020 by 34%, while community support decreased in 2021, but still raised over $10,000 for our programs. Membership dues showed a steady increase of 8% over 2020, and fundraising efforts resulted in a $35,523 increase over 2020. The 2021 Rouge Cruise returned to the water and raised over $38,000. The return of the Rain Barrel and Native Plant fundraiser raised over $46,000. The Adopt a Rain Garden fundraiser raised over $28,000, and our year-end appeal for 2021 raised an unprecedented $62,873. Other revenue that you see here of $28,747 included Rain Smart workshops, professional fees, and fees for service. And the last of our financial drivers was our return on investment of $63,798, an almost 77% increase over 2020. Friends of the Roof finished the year with $1,343,888 in total revenue and had the use of 2020 revenues released from restrictions of $945,224. Next slide, please. Thank you. The next slide is another bar graph um, labeled 2021 expenses by use with comparative 2020 totals with our total expenses equaling $1,252,636. Now that we've earned the revenue, how did we spend it? As the Friends of the Rouge staff grows, so do related salary and benefit expenses. This figure increased over last year by just under 35%. To the right of that bar, you can see the allocation of our time shown as a percentage of the total salaries and benefits. As you can see, 69% of our efforts were spent on Friends of the Rouge programs, leaving 21% of our time on the operations of our organization and 11% of our time on fundraising. There was also an increase in program expenses over the last year of $267,000. As you can see here in the bars, the restoration and trails programs saw a significant increase in expenses due to some very large grant expenditures in 2021. Operation expenses decreased by 9%, and fundraising expenses made up 4% of total 2021 expenses. Finally, um, depreciation. Depreciation represents aggregate fixed assets expensed over the lifetime of the assets. Our current fixed assets include our recently purchased truck, our Rouge 2 trailers, laptops and docking stations, furniture, office improvements, program equipment, and technology upgrades. As we fix our eyes on the future, we will endeavor to build resilience and to increase our ability to deal with whatever the future holds. We remain committed to upholding our financial integrity and transparent reporting practices. We will continue to expect the unexpected and promise to adapt quickly to the changing nonprofit and giving trends as we look forward to a very successful 2022 and beyond. As we go through the remainder of this presentation, you'll see where all of our efforts have paid off and who helped to contribute to our success. The annual report for 2021 is available on request and is available on our website. 
As always, our audits and 990 tax, tax returns are in our organizational documents page located in the About Us dropdown. Thanks so much for your time and attention. I'm handing the virtual mic over to Jackie. Thanks so much, Karen. Um, I will just be presenting uh, very briefly on our social media. Um, so as you can see here, um, our marketing and communication page. Um, to the upper left um, are a combination of photos um, pulled from our Facebook page. Uh, if you might remember uh, all of the rain that we had last year, um, and the, this photo um, was showing some of the uh, newly installed rain gardens at our home office at Park, uh, filling up with rain, just kind of showing how those rain gardens work. Um, and altogether, that reached over 10,000 people, which is awesome. Uh, so uh, Friends of the Rouge has placed uh, a major focus on education and public outreach. And um, we do a lot of that through our social media channels. Um, so at the top um, are our different handles uh, for Facebook and YouTube. You can find us at Friends of the Rouge. And then on Instagram and Twitter, you can find us at Rouge Friends. Uh, so be sure you're following, liking, commenting on all of our things. So we know that you see it um, and we know that you like what you're seeing. Um, and we continue to demonstrate success use of our social media channels as noted here. Um, the numbers of media hits um, hung nearly the same as 2020, which is fairly impressive since 2020 was all virtual. And uh, with 2021, we kind of got back out, um, back outside and off of our computers a little bit. Um, but to be transparent uh, in the that the large number of impressions and earned media uh, did dip uh, just slightly, um, in large part due to the, the media anomaly, an anomaly that happened in 2020, of course. Um, the year went completely virtual. And uh, we transitioned back to in-person um, and getting more media engagement on there. Um, this was something predicted at the end of 2020. Uh, that we could not keep up the virtual momentum, but we wanted to offer more in-person. Um, those volunteer hours above, um, as noted, uh, over 9,000 volunteer hours put in uh, in the year of 2021, which is just incredible. We thank you, uh, everyone who, who came to an event of ours, helped us out. We couldn't do it without you. Um, and we're, we're very excited to, to be back face-to-face -face outdoors and doing this amazing work. So next, I think I am passing it over to Lara. Oh, you're passing it back to me, Jackie. But right. no, thank you so awesome. much for giving us a media update. Appreciate that. Um, I do, before I go on, I do want to acknowledge that I did not mention Samuel Lokman um, with Concerned Residents of South Dearborn as a new board member in 2021 as well. Um, she's been an invaluable uh, addition to our team. Um, so welcome, Samra. Um, and so on this slide, you'll see that um, Friends of the Rouge continue to play a role in guiding public knowledge about important issues in the watershed, all but actually still in large part of, in a virtual format in 2021. So the images on this slide depict a group of ducks waiting in the rouge at the edge of the concrete channel. That's your top right image. The bottom right is an image of the Rouge River Industrial Corridor at sunset, depicting a bascule bridge raised up to allow a freighter to pass. And the image on the left depicts a word cloud created from our report on advocacy efforts in the rouge. So we advocate for the health of our watershed, the Rouge River and its tributaries, and all those, both the human and non-human who live here, and value the rich racial and ethnic diversity of our watershed, and see that as a key factor in advancing our mission and deepening our work in the communities we strive to serve. We appreciate the opportunity to serve on councils, committees, and invent events where Friends of the Rouge can lay the framework for mission-driven, meaningful advocacy and lobbying to educate and advise on issues relevant to our work. 
This work lives within the legal framework of a nonprofit and is informed by extensive research and guided by examples set by other nonprofits which operate effective and legally acceptable practices. Some highlights of our advocacy efforts over the past year include, first is um, present, presenting to state and federal legislators and their staff via Michigan Water School, um, at River Network's Action Day for Clean Water, and at Great Lakes Week virtually in Washington, DC. Um, I continue my service on the Michigan Environmental Council Policy Advisory Committee, which advises MEC staff on member groups responses to legislative issues relating to water. Um, we maintained an active role in the Rouge River Advisory Council, also called the RRAC, that serves as the public advisory committee for the Rouge River area of concern. Um, the group oversees large scale habitat projects meant to delist the Rouge as an AOC. Um, and I had the honor of being elected to chair that committee in January of 2022. Um, in addition, Friends of the Rouge was able to continue participation in the Concrete Channel AOC project um, with a myriad of partners who are also on this um, webinar this evening, a couple of which are the Alliance of Rouge Communities, Wayne County, um, the Army Corps of Engineers, EPA, Eagle, um, Friends of Detroit River, to name a few. Um, in addition, we, um, I was able to participate in Equitable Water Infrastructure Boot Camp through uh, River Network, which was a six part series. So advocacy has steadily increased over the past year with Friends of the Rouge Board of Directors formalizing the advocacy committee in August of 2020. This committee assessed the executive director in making more informed decisions regarding response and participation regarding our comments around environmental issues. And we continue to grow in this role and seek opportunities for personal and professional development as Friends of the Rouge moves more into advocacy and lobbying work. We are honored and encouraged by the public reception and the level of trust that you have placed within us. So, um, I just wanna remind everyone to please place your comments or questions in the Q&A section, um, some of which can probably be answered as we go through this, but um, up next, I'd like to introduce, uh, reintroduce Lara Edwards, our development director, who will discuss membership. Lara. <laughs> Thank you, Marie. Um, stay on for just one second and let me know if you can hear me. Perfect, okay. Thank you, Marie. And, uh, thank you to you, the members and friends of the Rouge, for your time and for your participation in this meeting this afternoon. Uh, an annual meeting really gives us a wonderful chance to stop and thank you for the amazing work that you make possible. And pictured here on this slide is amazing work. Uh, volunteers in action, planting rain gardens, students at the river, um, participating in student river science, and um, <laughs> a friend, <laughs> Teresa, exploring the Rouge River. Um, all of this work you make possible. Friends of the Rouge was formed as a member organization out of the understanding that a caring group of people can accomplish more together than any one of us acting alone. And with the environmental challenges that we are facing today, we need a collective response now more than ever. As Margaret Mead said, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. As a member, you are a vital part of this special community of people working towards a shared vision of the future, a future where a clean and vibrant Rouge River is the center of our community. Pure Michigan should not be a four hour drive away. You deserve a clean, safe, and healthy river and environment for you, your loved ones, your children's children, right here in your own hometown. And it is you, friend and member, 
that makes this vibrant future a possibility. Thank you. And I would encourage you, if you are not yet a member and friend of the Rouge, join us. Join us and feel free to reach out to me at any time if you want to explore how to grow your impact. A giant thank you to all the members and friends of the Rouge. Thank you for being part of this collective that stands for something better. Thank you for inspiring action and thank you for your support that powers a healthier river and healthier community. And thank you for caring. You are dearly valued and dearly appreciated. And now on behalf of Friends of the Rouge, Kara, uh, staff member Kara, and you're welcome to turn on your, um, hey, <laughs> my friend and colleague Kara and I are honored to take a moment and pay tribute to some truly exceptional longtime friends. Thanks, Laura. Next slide, please, Sally. Friends of the Rouge extends our deepest thanks to the special members you see on this slide and the two slides to come for their 10 years or more of dedication and membership. Next slide, please. Thank you, Sally. These members are longstanding and dear friends of the Rouge, many of whom shown here are founding members, former and current board members, dedicated volunteers, and vital supporters. To those with a decade or more of membership, we thank you and we celebrate your legacy of impact for a better Rouge River. It is our honor to work alongside you for a more vibrant river and community for this generation and the next. I will now turn it over to Cindy Ross to start our program reports. Thanks, Kara. Hi, everyone. Uh, Friends of the Rouge Restoration programs include educational activities, hands-on work days, and more recently, uh, an earned revenue component. Our work is very collaborative in nature, and the critical piece is you. The pa this past year, the restoration team engaged more than 2,500 people from all areas of the Rouge watershed and the city of Detroit to work toward a common goal, to improve our local rivers in your community. You contributed 6,400 6, hours to learn about river issues, actions that can be taken to improve our river conditions and to directly make a difference by working with Friends of the Rouge to install and maintain rain gardens. Together, we created 7,300 square feet of new rain gardens that will prevent nearly 68,000 gallons of rainwater from entering the sewer system each and every time it rains. You helped us plant an additional 18,000 square, square feet of rain gardens um, in that was excavated last year with tens of thousands of native plants um, at the park um, our office headquarters. Um, this work will have a lasting impact toward a cleaner, healthier Rouge River for generations to come, as well as creating amazing spaces for us to enjoy. As restoration programming expanded in 2021, so too did the restoration team. We currently have four full-time, two part-time, very soon to be three part-time, and two office volunteers that work every day to make this magic happen. Here's a brief example of some of, of the impact of some of our work. Uh, Friends of the Rouge is collaborating with uh, the concerned res residents of South Dearborn. Uh, concerned residents of South Dearborn advocates on behalf of residents of Dearborn South End neighborhood. The South End is geographically isolated from the rest of Dearborn, cut off by the Ford Rouge plant, I-94 and a belt of heavy industry. The community consists predominantly of Yemeni immigrants and exhibits a high degree of vulnerability per the CDC's social vulnerability index. Friends of the Rouge worked with the community to implement a grant from Cleveland Cliffs to plant 100 trees and right-of-ways across the neighborhood. 
Major concerns of residents in the community are air pollution emanating from nearby industry, as well as a lack of tree canopy cover within the community. With concerned residents of South Dearborn support, Friends of the Rouge applied for and received funding from the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation for an additional 240 trees and a pilot rain garden to help reduce flooding issues in the neighborhood. That's one example of our work. Another one I'd like to share with you um, is that we are working with Henry Ford Health System to create a new um, public plaza as part of the development of the South Campus on West Grand Boulevard and Lincoln Street. The roughly 25,000 square foot plaza will include removal of approximately 12,500 square feet of asphalt, yay, and the creation of, a, of an active recreation plaza, including ping pong tables, basketball hoops, along with art and a native meadow, as well as a 2,500 square foot bioretention garden, which will manage approximately 300,000 gallons of rainwater runoff annually. This project will be completed this year. Um, hospital staff, um, patients and visitors from across the region will benefit from this project. And lastly, I'd like to just share that Rouge Rescue continued in spite of the pandemic. Rouge Rescue 21 had a lot of challenges, but you showed up in spite of COVID-19, forcing sites to opt out due to the restrictions, lack of staff, other, um, or just closures in general. A lot of amazing people came out and made a difference for the Rouge River. And for that, we were so grateful. Um, 16 sites from 11 communities participated. Um, you filled nearly 300 bags of trash from the Rouge River and floodplain and a few larger items that were cleaned up. These were included tires, an air conditioning unit, lumber, lots and lots of plastic bottles, food containers, wrappers, trash. Um, you also worked to control invasive species and planted over 90 um, native trees. We couldn't do this work without you. We're excited to bring even more programming to you this year. We're excited um, to plant tens of thousands of trees, seedlings along the Lower Rouge uh, from John Hicks to John Daly. We're also working to bring more trees to South Dearborn and install several dozen rain gardens across the region. And we thank you. I'd like to turn it over to Erin. Actually, I think we have a recording of Erin so that she could share the progress of her program. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Erin Cassidy, Education Manager, and I apologize that I can't be there with you live today. My husband and I are getting to know the newest member of our family, and I promise you don't want to hear a crying baby in the background. So I do appreciate the opportunity to be able to share a little bit of the educational work that was completed back in 2021. It was still another bumpy ride for our schools that send their students to the river as part of our Rouge Education Project, but we were able to see an uptick in participation in both spring and fall as some were able to resume their usual but modified activities. For the first year, students were asked to submit videos summarizing what they learned during their fall monitoring experience where they looked at the bugs, chemicals, and did a land survey. While the live portion of the Plain Student Symposium had to be canceled due to a variety of circumstances outside of our control, it was a great way to share and summarize the results of their activities, get them thinking about action they could take in their community to address any concerns that they may have identified. We also launched an online activity called Explore the Rouge, which is a step-by-step -step way to teach about the river and how to be an engaged part of the community, earning points and fun badges along the way. It is open to all and can be found linked on our website. We actually use the same platform to revamp some of our training events for educators. Speaking of training events, our in-person Summer Institute was back on and one of the groups of teachers we worked with were doing a special summer program with their students at Henry Ford Early College in Dearborn. And this was to make up for some lost learning during COVID. The teacher had done the Rouge Education Project while she herself was in high school. 
then assisted another teacher with it again when she went back to teaching at that same high school, and now has taken it to this new school that she teaches at. She remembered the experience and thought it would be a perfect fit for their summer program and was able to bring on two really enthusiastic math and social studies teachers in the process. They did a really incredible job integrating and adapting the program after many changes to the time that they were spending with the students and the format that they were spending with the students. But we really look forward to working with this group more in the future. Finally, as part of a newer educational initiative, Meetings with local and elected officials took place as part of a water school hosted by the Michigan State University Extension. We were able to have four meetings with state representatives last year, talking about watershed issues in their community, learning what their environmental priorities and concerns were, and we began to build a relationship with them and hopefully trust as an expert in this field should they have additional questions about the issues or even their constituents that are reaching out to them. We're looking forward to continuing to grow and expand our educational umbrella, and we have even brought on a new staff person to assist both our educational and monitoring efforts. I will allow Sally to introduce this newest member of our team. Thank you so much for your time. I will now turn it over to Sally Petrella to discuss our monitoring efforts. you are muted ah thank you thank you so much Erin uh, uh, we miss her but she's home having fun with her new baby um, I am really happy to have all of you joining us tonight and I'm really pleased to introduce our new education and monitoring assistant Sam Davis and Sam could you just turn on your camera and um, say hello for a minute there hi everyone uh, it's so great to meet all of you uh, I'll bet virtually. Um, hopefully I'll be able to meet some of you in person at Downey Brewing later tonight. Um, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to uh, have the opportunity to be working with you all and, and doing this really, really important work. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to it. And uh, thank you, Sally, for uh, the introduction. Thanks, Sam. We're delighted to have her. She uh, has been with us. She joined the team in March and she's already dived into working with schools. She just finished presenting to a group of what, fifth graders um, on Zoom, but she'll get out in the field quite soon. And I, I also, I don't know if she was able to join us tonight, but I'm also happy to have in addition to our team, our uh, biological monitoring intern, Amber Puckett. Um, she was supposed to be out planting trees today. Um, but she's been a great help. So uh, just to recap monitoring for 2021, which includes our benthic monitoring program, our bug hunts and stonefly searches, our fish surveys, and our frog and toad survey, and so much more. Uh, 2001, we, uh, we adapted to the pandemic and moved forward in the best way that we could. It's, it's ever-changing. Uh, we expanded to explore new parameters and find new audiences, and we had some exciting new findings. So we started the year having figured out how to hold a bug hunt all outdoors with our team leaders picking up equipment and volunteers meeting their teams out in the field instead of meeting all together at the beginning. I was amazed at how our team leaders and volunteers adapted. And I know part of it was that everyone was so anxious to get outside and do something involving other people. We took the best of what we learned from the pandemic and offered trainings part virtually and part in the field. For our frog and toad survey, we kept the trainings all virtual, which allowed us to open up trainings to people who just wanted to learn about frogs and toads since we were no longer limited by the capacity of an auditorium. And we even had someone from North Carolina join us. In 2001, we expanded it into some areas with new partners. Oakland County had found a new aquatic invasive plant called European Frogbit in Novi, and they recruited us to survey to see how far it spread. Frogbit looks like a tiny lily and it can suffocate ponds. Restoration coordinator Jackie Heckela, who is pictured in the top left on the right side, um, led this work with the assistance of Swarali Lakra, our um, intern. 
they were they surveyed uh, 200 bodies of water, lakes, including even walled lake by canoe, rivers and small ponds. And of those 200 sites, they, they actually found no frog bit, very happy to report. And Sam will be taking the reins from Jackie this year and continue to focus in closer to the Novi to see if we do have more of that plant in the watershed. We engaged a new audience this year in monitoring with a partnership with Trout Unlimited that involved engaging middle school girls in fly fishing activities to get them excited about science at a time when girls often turn away from it. So this is called Stream Girls. And nine girls, uh, you can see them in the photo at the bottom, all dressed up in waders. Um, they were from Inkster's Camp Inspire. Uh, all of them putting on waders for the very first time, got in the river, got to look for bugs, find some fish, learned how to tie a, a fly, cast a rod. And a lot of them just really enjoyed the experience and got a taste of potential career in science. In August, while sampling for fish in the Johnson Creek, we were very excited, very excited to find the first red side dace, an endangered minnow that is unique to the Rouge that we had not seen since 2012. So you can see a photo in the center top of this uh, slide. It's a tiny little fish with a red stripe and a very large mouth. This tiny little fish jumps out of water to catch insects. And red side dace need very cold, clean water which is threatened by the continual development of the outer reaches of our watershed that has really stepped up in recent years. We also were surprised to find an endangered freshwater mussel while out surveying, surveying for fish in Canton. Freshwater mussels, sometimes called clams, have a unique dependence on fish for reproduction and are very rare in the Rouge. Since they're protected, we had to get a collector's permit to document these animals. So we, we called up our, our local expert, Joe Rathbun, who actually wrote a book about freshwater mussels. And he came out and under his guidance as some eagle biologists, we conducted a very thorough survey in the spot on the Lower Rouge and found not just one, but three new species of freshwater mussels, including the endangered Lilliput, a uh, special concern called rainbow, and another species called mucket raising the number of currently found freshwater mussels in the Rouge from 10 to 13. The Rouge still has some very special animals that are holding on, and we need to make sure that new development does not add more sediment and raise stream temperatures beyond what these mussels and the red side dace can tolerate. And the photo on the right, of course, is Joe, who is here tonight uh, holding up one of the rainbow mussels that we found there. I think it's the rainbow, might be a mucket. Joe would know. So um, towards the end of 2021, we embarked on some projects that are carrying forward into 2022, including testing rouge fish for the toxic group of chemicals called PFAS, and also working on a watershed report card. We could not have accomplished this without our dedicated citizen scientists, our local biologists and partners, and our funders that make our monitoring programs possible. Funders include Bosch, the Rouge Communities who sponsor bug sites, the Alliance of Rouge Communities, Eagle, the Michigan Invasive Species Grant Program, and Trout Unlimited. And now I turn it over to my colleague, Herman Jenkins, to cover what has been amazing work moving forward our water trail. Thank you, Sally. Um, yes, my name is Herman Jenkins. I am the uh, Trails Program Manager. And uh, last year was actually my first year with Friends of the Rouge. I started in February of 2021, and I can tell you that I'm just excited, as excited today uh, to be a part of this team as I was on day one. Um, the Friends of the Rouge Trails program goal is to create meaningful and equitable access and to connect people and communities to this greatly restored Rouge River for recreation and enjoyment. Uh, our aim is to establish a 29 mile water trail uh, and a network of connected greenway trails on the Lower Rouge River. Our focus is on the Lower Rouge because the water levels are typically high enough to sustain paddling. Um, on this slide, you're actually looking at a map of the water trail uh, at the top of the slide, and it shows the proposed trailheads on the trail from Canton on the left uh, to the city of River Rouge uh, on the right. Uh, these collective projects will increase the mobility and access for Lower Rouge communities 
to Wayne County Park assets like Heinz Park uh, and is part of a larger regional network of trails uh, that includes the Iron Bell Trail, Joe Louis Greenway, Down River Link Greenways, and the Great Lakes Way. Um, through the Lower Rouge River Water Trail Leadership Committee, uh, which meets bi-monthly, uh, the trails program focuses on four primary work objectives. Uh, those areas are built environment, community engagement, recreation, and sustainability. Uh, so let's zoom in and uh, take a look at uh, built environment, and we'll give you a broad picture of the many projects happening in the Lower Rouge Corridor. Uh, with funding from the Ralph C. Wilson Foundation, Friends of the Rouge is working with stakeholders to develop uh, 1.9 miles of new greenway in, in Dearborn that will connect the existing uh, gateway trail at the campus of U of M Dearborn uh, to the Henry Ford campus, uh, Henry Ford Museum campus at Village Drive. Um, there's also ongoing coordination uh, with the ARC EPA and Army Corps of Engineers that Marie also referenced. Uh, who is planning several dynamic habitat restoration projects uh, for the concrete channel uh, in this section of the Rouge in Dearborn uh, that will intersect the trail. Uh, these improvements include new wetlands, uh, upland habitat, uh, and potentially restoring uh, oxbows or natural meanders to the river uh, for wildlife habitat. With funding through the Community Foundation for Southeast Michigan, uh, the design development continues for the multi-purpose trailheads at Kesey Field House. Uh, in Melvindale, uh, Bellinger Park in River Rouge, and Fort Street Bridge Park in Detroit. Um, each of these locations includes a universally accessible kayak launch and other trailhead amenities, uh, including kayak lockers, bike racks, and green inf infrastructure enhancements. Uh, the photo on the uh, bottom left is a rendering of an accessible uh, launch uh, at Kesey Field House in Melvindale. Um, each of these locations is, is critical on the trail in the industrial corridor of the route that collectively will create shorter, more recreational paddle trips on this historic section of the river. Um, further upstream, uh, the Inkster Trailhead Project team grew out of the Lower Rouge River Water Trail Leadership Committee, uh, Friends of the Rouge, National Kidney Foundation of Michigan, uh, the Inkster Task Force, uh, City of Inkster, and Wayne County are working together to uh, drive this project. And uh, we're applying for a grant through uh, the Community Foundation for Southeast Michigan uh, for design development uh, of the multi-purpose trailhead in Inkster Park. Um, in 2023, uh, Wayne County Parks plans to open universally accessible kayak uh, launches bookended in Vinoy Dorsey Park um, near the uh, Jefferson Barnes Community Center, uh, greatly improving access um, in the Norwayne community in Westland. Um, and last year, we received a grant from the Funders Network's uh, Partners for Places program to work with the City of Westland, the Norway Community Citizens Council, and the National Kidney Foundation to develop programming and placemaking uh, to support uh, this multi-purpose uh, trailhead install in the City of Westland and the Norway community. Um, so why do we do all this work, all this work to create access and bring people together to build community. It's about creating memories and, and having fun. So let's take a look at, at recreation. You know, we've hosted several paddle trips in 2021, including our National Canoe Day celebration at the Melvindale Boat Launch at Kesey Field House, where we offered opportunities to learn to paddle for free. Um, our industrial uh, paddle trip was uh, sold out in 2021. Uh, the photo at the uh, bottom middle is from our industrial paddle trip. You can see the old Ford Rouge plant in the background. Um, we had an active livery working out of uh, Dearborn Ford Field Park uh, in 2021, Motor City Canoe and Kayak Rental. Um, the photo on the bottom right is actually from our fall paddle trip. Uh, and this is a group photo before launch. Uh, and I must say our fall paddle trip was, was just amazing. Uh, one of my favorites, um, you know, the fall colors under the tree canopy were just spectacular. And we look forward to, uh, to more paddle trips in, in 2022. Um, when we think about engaging the community, our dry dock pop-up events were new this year and were another way to uh, have fun and meet people where they are to share our vision for connected trails on the Lower Rouge. Uh, we brought a canoe, the uh, Rouge Watershed Interactive Terrain Model, and shared our vision for, for, for trails um, in that corridor. Um, National Kidney Foundation was a great partner in this project. Uh, they were on hand to share healthy lifestyle tips and uplift paddling and trails use as uh, felt healthy fitness alternatives. Uh, we did over 11 dry dock pop-up events. Um, I never knew a canoe could become an amusement ride. 
Um, but lots of people were very excited about taking a picture in the canoe. Um, and they've just been a great way for us to connect and meet new people where they're at and cast a broader net. Um, and how do we sustain this? You know, we certainly couldn't do this without the help of our volunteers. You know, our, our Woody Debris work days were, were very well attended. Um, in 2021, we scheduled three events this past year. We're able to clear and open several log jams, um, focusing on the uh, area in, in Dearborn near the Fishway Passage. Um, and we're uh, very grateful for volunteers, Bill Craig, uh, Brian Frady, Jeff Linder, and Dave Timmerman for their help uh, with our Woody Debris efforts, not only at our scheduled workday events, but, but every day that they're out there on, on the water, uh, putting in some due diligence. Um, Wayne County's Lower Rouge Habitat Restoration Project uh, aims to remediate 10 of the largest log jams uh, on the Lower Rouge. Uh, some of that project work began in 2021, uh, and we hope uh, uh, to have a, an open trail uh, from Wayne City Hall to Dearborn Ford Field Park by the end of the season in 2022. So fingers crossed. Um, looking ahead, uh, we're very excited about continuing this work in 2023 and advancing towards our goals. And we appreciate all of you for your support and participation along the way. So thank you very much. And I'll pass it to Marie. Thanks so much, Herman. And thank you to the whole Friends of the Rouge team and board who have really made this incredible work possible. Um, so now we're at the second section of our program. This is the award ceremony portion. Awardees will be granted panelist permission we kindly invite you to turn on your camera and unmute yourself to accept your award if you so choose and say a few words. Please wait until your award is announced um, to unmute and turn on your camera. Um, each, uh, diff a different staff person will announce each award. Um, so once they're done introducing you, you can then go ahead and say a few words. So the very first one, uh, the Stewardship Awards honor those who have served a lifetime in dedication to environmental stewardship, and in particular, those who have given many years of service to Friends of the Rouge. Last year, we honored Cindy Ross, and this year we honor another lifelong serving staff member. Next slide, please. So I am pleased beyond, beyond doubt to have the honor of presenting Karen Hanna, our Operations Director, the Friends of the Rouge Stewardship Award, an award given to those who have dedicated a lifetime to advancing the mission of Friends of the Rouge. 2021 marked Karen's 20th year of service with Friends of the Rouge. Just hold space for that. The image depicts a recent headshot of Karen, long blonde hair and a navy blue shirt with a pine tree in the background. For the past five years, I have had the pleasure of working directly with Karen. Her cheerful professionalism coupled, coupled with organizational aptitude lends to her success at Friends of the Rouge. She brings her full self to work. She's open, honest, fair, respectful, and always willing to help anyone, literally at any time, even on vacation. She takes her role as operations director very seriously and has a key role in running all of the back end, the nuts and the bolts that you don't see, the engine of the organization kind of stuff. She keeps accurate records and reports, oversees our audit in 990, maintains our 501c3 status. She fills out all reports, um, drafts policies and procedures. And this is just naming a handful. We could sit here all night and talk about the things that Karen does to make sure um, our program managers and myself and the rest of the team are um, in compliance and you know, following the rules and procedures and um, that we're in line with all of the things that um, are required for us to be a fully functioning, transparent nonprofit. Next slide, please. She really meets her work with an ever ready, cheerful, friendly and approachable disposition and really brings her unwavering passion for her work and the people she works with. I am honored each day to call Karen, my colleague, my partner in our collective work to better our hometown watershed. So with that, Karen, I would like to present this award for you, to you for your tireless dedication to the Rouge. Next slide. So this bumblebee was created by our maintenance man, Dan McMahon man's brother. Um, Dan McMahon man is the, the maintenance, head of maintenance at park. Um, and his brother practices welding as a hobby. 
we created a set of frogs for Sally and Mike Darga in 2019 and 2021 respectively, and a dragonfly for Cindy last year. So the three images above are of a different angle of the yellow and black metal bumblebee statue that Karen will receive soon. Um, Karen, your award actually will be at Downey Brewing Company tonight. So it will include a placard with your name and the award and date. So with that, Karen, if you'd like to say a few words, we'd love to hear from you. I am going to say a few words, but for some reason, my video will not turn back on. So I apologize for that. Um, <clears throat> Marie, I thank you so much for all those kind words. It's, oh, let's see. Yeah, it's it's not working. Sorry, my video is not working. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure working with you and more importantly, learning from you. I appreciate all of the progressive changes that you've made to make this organization better and to everybody else on the team that I've worked with for 20 years or less, I am just constantly amazed at the bright, talented individuals that we bring to this organization. The ones who have graced our board of directors, our staff and our volunteers who give selflessly of their time, talent and energy to help us fulfill our mission. And of course, the generosity of so many individuals, corporations, foundations, donors and grantors. Um, I am honored to be a part of this organization and just, appreciate this so much. Uh, that bee is really cute. I can't wait to get it into my rain garden. Thanks again, everybody. And um, thanks for everybody being here. Thanks, Karen. Um, next slide, please. So next we'll move into the final phase of our program, the Best Friends of the Rouge Awards. This award was introduced in 1993 to honor those who have gone above and beyond their job description or regular call of duty to help the Rouge. So the image on this slide shows five muddy boots from five different people pointed together after a long walk in the woods after a rain. The first recipients of this reward were Dr. Oren Gallerloos as educator, John Dingle as elected official for his work with the Rouge River National Wet Weather Demonstration Pro Program, DWSD as a governmental unit and Steve Marshall was a founding board member as an individual. We have so many individuals who make the Rouge watershed a better place to live, work and play. So we are excited to celebrate these special awardees who have gone far and beyond the call of the watershed to help in their own way. And so Cindy Ross, our restoration manager will introduce our first awardee, Cindy. Thank you. It is truly a pleasure uh, to announce this award on behalf of Friends of the Rouge, Board of Directors and staff. I would like to congratulate um, St. Suzanne Cody Rouge Community Resource Center, Steve Wasco as Executive Director uh, for being selected as recipient of this Best Friend of the Rouge Award. The center has been selected for this award because of Steve's enthusiasm for our work and mission, mission, and because he has gone above and beyond to support action for a better Rouge River. The center has exemplified best practices for managing stormwater and for informing the community about the need to manage stormwater. After participating with Friends of the Rouge and Sierra Club Michigan chapter through the Land and Water Works Coalition to install their very first little rain garden at the center in 2018. Steve fully embraced the concept of rain gardens and worked with us to create an additional four large scale rain gardens on the campus. He, the center has also collaborated with us to host environmental um, education programming for adults through our stormwater specialist workforce development training, um, as well as bringing this type of education um, to middle and high school youth at the center. As if that wasn't enough, Steve has also expanded this educational programming with sister churches, um, including Christ the King. Um, and in addition, uh, he has organized a water day at the center where he invited the community to come and learn all about the center, what the center has done to protect our water resources and to connect them with resources that are available to them. 
The center has become a resource for others in the community. Um, they have hosted uh, sites for our ring garden tours, um, as well as tours that other, have, other organizations have put on. Uh, the center is just a beacon of hope for other houses of worship seeking to replicate the steps that, that Steve has taken to implement green stormwater infrastructure practices to gain green credits to reduce the drainage fee at the center. Steve, um, here's your, your award will be uh, delivered to you in the near future. Um, I'm not sure, do we have a photo of the awards? I have it right there with me, Cindy. Awesome, thank you, Jackie. So, so Steve, I would love to um, invite you to turn your camera on and say a few words if you'd like to. Thanks uh, very much, Cindy. Uh, I really, really appreciate this. And uh, really, I think should be uh, us uh, thanking you and your team and all of our partners for being our best friends um, in this work. Um, we frankly knew nothing about this about four and a half, five years ago uh, and have learned with uh, you and many others at our side. Um, we, as you know, and as many have heard this story, you know, we backed into this not because we called a meeting of all the environmentalists in our neighborhood and parish and everybody came, but largely out of economic necessity in the form of a $24,000 estimated annual drainage fee. And from that though, really uh, found a nexus between uh, what we've kind of gently referred to as the five E's, uh, that being the economics, the education, employability and employment opportunities, empowerment of the local community, and of course the environment. Um, and that, um, that has allowed this just to uh, do indeed tremendous things uh, through the involvement of a whole heck of a lot of people. Uh, just last night, we started our latest cohort of middle school students participating in an after school STEAM program that will meet for 14 session, sessions and conclude with uh, the constructing of a rain garden. Uh, the, the program is here at St. Suzanne's, the garden will be at Christ the King. And uh, I, I counted Cindy and as of this cohort starting uh, in this class, we now have uh, involved more than 100 youth and adult students in the educational programming uh, that have built these four rain gardens here in the couple at Christ the King. So uh, thank you uh, very much and uh, for everything. Well deserved, thank you. Thank you, Steve. Sorry, trying to turn on my video there. Can you hear me now? So I have the honor of presenting the next award, which goes to Jack Catrone. Um, so on behalf of the Friends of the Rouge Board of Directors and staff, I'd like to congratulate you on being uh, chosen as a best friend of the Rouge. Uh, you've been selected for this award because of your enthusiasm for our mission and because you've gone above and beyond to support action for a better Rouge River. So Jack started volunteering for Friends of the Rouge when he was in seventh grade and started surveying for frogs and toads with his mom, which he continued for many years. And as he grew up, he started participating in the bug hunts. Uh, became, went through training, became a bug hunt team leader, uh, trained with the Rouge Education Project and be became a, an assistant for that program. Um, and we really enjoyed uh, him as a reliable volunteer for quite a few years until he went away to college, um, but still kept in touch. And then Jack came back. And when he came back, he was in a new position with the state. Uh, and he was in charge of some grants and he just did a great job of helping us to understand how we could be eligible for these grants, um, helped us through the application process. And you might see him in this picture uh, standing in the river in a frozen river as a stonefly search team leader. But you also see him on the right at the podium at, a, at the um, grand opening of the park parking lot project, which uh, his department 
funded and uh, without a little support from Jack. I'm not sure that we would have discovered that we would be eligible for something like that. Um, Jack has been just a, a great supporter, providing expertise to our restoration team as they work through design issues. He's a trusted advisor. He's on the monitoring committee, always willing to take the time to explain some of the complexities or watershed problems, funding priorities. So for all of those reasons, Jack, you are a best friend of the Rouge. And um, Sam actually has your award. So Sam, if you wanted to uh, hold that up. Here's your award, Jack. It looks great. It's so cool. Congratulations. Thank you so much for all the work that you've done. So I will be, if you're going to be at Downey tonight, I will give you this there. And if not, then we will get it to you another day. So thank you. So congratulations, Jack. And if you wanted to say a few words, this is your opportunity. Sure. Yeah. Um, thank, thank you so much, Sally and, and Sam and everyone at Friends of the Roo. This is awesome. Uh, really cool and, and unexpected. When Sally told me I was getting honored, it really did make my day. Um, uh, Sally, as you said, I'm, I'm lucky enough that I get to work on these issues of water quality in the Rouge in Southeast Michigan every day. Um, this stuff has been really important to me for a long time in my life. So uh, just to get some recognition that the work that I do supports uh, the incredible work that you guys all do in a meaningful way uh, means a lot to me as a volunteer and as a rep of the department. Um, you know, at Eagle, I think we, we often joke that we're always being told that we either do too much or not enough, depending on who you talk to, uh, an advocate versus someone who's subject to our regulations. So stuff like this means more than you know to us. Um, and so I guess I kind of want to like in part dedicate this to all my colleagues at Eagle who work in compliance and work every day to implement the Clean Water Act. Uh, they really are some of the best allies the river could ask for. Obviously we can't do everything, um, but I like to think that most of us try to do everything we can as the law allows. So um, yeah, just happy and, and proud to be associated with this great organization, the Friends of the Rouge, um, and can't wait together to do more awesome work, both as a professional and a volunteer. So thank you so much. This is really cool. Congratulations. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm. I'm humbled and, and proud to be back to um, announce the next recipient. Um, on behalf of Friends of the Rouge, our board of directors and staff, I would like to congratulate Vaughn Willis for being selected as a recipient of Best Friend of the Rouge Award. Vaughn has been selected for this award because of her enthusiasm, for our mission and for going above and beyond to support action for a better Rouge River. Vaughn has been a champion for green stormwater infrastructure across the Detroit community since she completed our rain gardens to the rescue course um, and installed her very own rain garden back in 2017. From there, she went on to become a stormwater specialist graduate, a land and waterworks ambassador, and then a host site for a commercial bioretention demonstration practice. She is a community advocate who works tirelessly to share the information she has learned with others and to inspire others to implement nature-based solutions to our urban stormwater problems. Vaughn has patiently and diligently worked through the Detroit Water Sewage Department's regulatory and credit process um, to attain the maximum credits allowable on her commercial business bioretention practice. This is no small feat. She has just been an amazing advocate and fought very, very hard um, to get the full 80% reduction of her drainage fee. Um, she's been eager and willing to share the steps that she has taken to make this happen with others. Last year, uh, Vaughn also secured a small grant to provide 275 gallon rain totes uh, to Detroit community groups and organizations so that they can help hold back some of our rainwater. 
Uh, she also donated space at her commercial building to store those 275 gallon totes until the recipients were able to pick them up this spring. And as soon as she had her space back, we were able to secure a donation of rain barrels from a local company and proceeded to fill that space back up <laughs> with a bunch of rain barrels. So Vaughn has just been so gracious and so open um, to helping us achieve our mission. So with that, Vaughn, I'd love to, uh, cheers to you. And I'd love to welcome you to turn on your camera and say a couple words if you're comfortable. Okay, my phone is acting up, you guys, so I don't think I can do the camera, but no I can do the audio, but I see the picture of me right there. So that's me standing in front of my um, home um, after the rain garden was installed, or was that, no, that wasn't the day it was installed, but I think it was a few months after. It was after. about a year later. Yep. A year later. So I, I do want to say how... Uh, Greatly, I'm appreciative of, of working with Friends of the Rouge. Um, it's been a long journey. Um, I, I'm a little teary-eyed. I'm a crybaby, guys. Um, I, Cindy, I appreciate all the kind uh, words she spoke of me. Um, but I get extra teary because I am, a, um, if I can kind of pull it delicately, I'm a victim of the flooding because I live uh, half a block from the river. And so I have like a bittersweet relationship with water, <laughs> rain water that is. I love bioswales, I love uh, rain gardens, but I don't like the flooding, especially what it does to um, my home. Um, but um, I'm extremely excited to work with you guys. It's been a journey. I've worked with Sierra Club, Detroit Future City, Eastside Community Network, Keep Going Detroit. So, and what I really want to say, though, I, I think you guys do an excellent job of partnering with other organizations that have the same goals in mind in terms of, uh, of just doing the right thing for nature. If I can just kind of make it that simple. So um, I, I look forward to many more years with working with Friends of the Rouge, and I look forward to um, spreading the good work and helping out with further outreach efforts. Because I think the more people that we surround ourselves with and share information, I think that'll help us achieve our goal faster. So thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Well-deserved. Thank you. I'm uh, excited to uh, introduce our next uh, award winner, um, the Julie Rose Friendship Outstanding Volunteer Award winner. Um, this award was created in 2011 as a special Best Friend of the Rouge Award to be presented to an individual who embodies the spirit and stewardship and passion that our late board member, Julie Friendship, showed in helping to carry out the mission of Friends of the Rouge in her everyday life. This year's award winner is a real superhero and not just any superhero. He is the newest and strongest Avenger, Rouge Riverman, also known as Brian Frady. Yes, his real name is his alias because Rouge Riverman is the truest and most committed volunteer working to help Friends of the Rouge achieve its stated mission to protect and nurture the Rouge watershed I have ever witnessed. Like the famed comic book superhero Avengers like Iron Man, Captain America, or even the Black Panther, Rouge Riverman has his own uniform and patented vehicles. Any given day of the year, you can find him working from his cargo van and steel canoe and waders in a cap, removing all kinds of trash and litter from the river. When I first met Brian, it was in wintertime on the Rouge after I was first hired and I could not believe he was on the river in the cold weather, snow falling in his canoe filled with a tire or two some dirty plastic bottles and a few tattered solo cups he had just pulled from the river. He told me stories of how he floated an entire dumpster out of the Rouge River in a single paddle. I've seen pictures of Rouge River Man on Facebook standing in the middle of the frozen Rouge 
in the industrial channel. Only a superhero should do that. Only R Rouge River Man did that. He monitors up and updates wildlife activity, activity in the corridor, especially the beavers and the deer. Um, in short, most of the time, I'm pretty jealous of his life because nothing beats a day on the river. And every day, it seems, he's out on the water working to make the Rouge better. Um, this past summer, Rouge River Man came to rescue an ailing fishing deck at Fort Street Beach Park. Using reclaimed wood, Brian rebuilt the deck so that anglers could better enjoy fishing from this very popular spot um, on the Rouge. Rouge River Man shows up at our Woody Debris work days and helps our volunteers uh, working to clean and open log jams. Um, I've walked the river to scout for paddle trips to you know, make sure the water levels are okay and log jams are, are clear. And I'm always delighted to, to just happen to run into Rude River Man while he's out working on a random day. Um, Brian is truly an amazing steward of the Rouge. His energy is relentless. Uh, no one would believe that it is all fueled by a cup of coffee brewed fresh inside his canoe, inside of a French coffee press that he found on the Rouge. Congratulations to our hero and our Avenger, Rouge River Man, Mr. Brian Frady. Here is your award, Brian. Um, I'm going to bring this to the Downey tonight. Hopefully, we'll see you there. If you would like to say a few words now, um, I believe we're going to open up your mic and allow you to do so. Thank you so much for your work, Brian. So looking ahead, um, we are excited to share a few snippets of upcoming work. Um, we're going to continue deepening our work around diversity, equity, inclusion, and justice, uh, seeking new ways to expand our relationships with the communities we serve. I have the honor of presenting at River Rally. It's a national conference in June with uh, the Hur uh, Huron River Watershed Council's ED, Rebecca Esselman, and our DEI consultant, Morgan McDonald. Um, about our journey through the genesis of our DEUI work at the Rouge and the Huron as guided by Morgan. Um, we have many Earth Day events coming up and Rouge Rescue 2022. Um, we will be launching this in just a few short weeks. So um, check our calendar, e-news, um, uh, and yep, yeah, and Sally has the key dates up there too. Um, you know, we have a lot of great things happening with our water trail and its future. We have some really hopeful progress on implementing the built environment around our trails work, both water trail and greenways trails. Um, we have expansion and continued, continued expansion of our restoration work to a regional level via a social enterprise collaborative with our sister watershed groups. That's been underway for the last year, almost two years. Um, this also includes green collar workforce development program with SWIST that um, Cindy had mentioned earlier. And then just our continued dedication and uh, participation in more policy and advocacy discussions. Um, we have a strong desire to continue deepening our work across watershed topics to gain deeper understanding of how to uplift our mission through a regional and national lens. Um, and so looking ahead, I'd like to draw your attention to a few key dates here on the slide. Your Friends of the Rouge team is hard at work planning controlled in-person and virtual engagement opportunities. Uh, we do have some um, updates to our COVID policies in place. One in particular is that Friends of the Rouge no longer requires in-person participants to be fully vaccinated or to demonstrate proof of a negative PCR or rapid test. Um, that's a major um, deviation from policy that's been in place the last year. And unvaccinated participants uh, are not required to wear a mask outdoors as long as social distancing is available. Um, but we do continue to request that participants practice good judgment when you choose to attend our events. If you feel sick or someone at home is not well, please do uh, make the choice to stay home and ensure the safety of others. I know my own children are getting sicker now, not with COVID, but many other things that we thought were extinct um, in the last several weeks just due to the lifting of the mask mandate. But you can always check our website for the most up-to-date information. Um, so Friends of the Rouge, we continue to work tirelessly towards our vision of a future where clean and vibrant Rouge River is the center of our community. Each and every one of you are the reason we know that vision can become a reality. 
So with that, I cordially invite you to our in-person afterglow at Downey Brewing Company in Dearborn from six to eight. We have food from Shimmy Shack that will be available for purchase. So you can come meet and greet all the staff and board members, ask us questions, make connections, or just enjoy the company of other people who love their backyard river as much as you. Um, and we'll pop to the next slide. So we will upload this presentation to our website in the next day or two and share a link via our e-newsletter as well as on our social channels. So thank you so much for joining us this evening. It has been an absolute pleasure to speak to you. Okay, so with that, um, I just wanna say thank you to all who have participated in the Q&A. Um, you know, please continue to send us questions via email, um, make comments on our social media pages, suggestions for us to review. Um, we will always make time for you and we always get back to you. Um, so um, just again, um, thank you so much to everyone who's joined us this evening. Um, and we hope to see you in an hour and eight minutes at Downey Brewing Company. Um, so with that, we'll say good night and we'll see you again next year. Take care, everyone. <laughs>